Hey everybody, to get started on making our tropical birds, you're gonna get a piece of paper. You're gonna to wanna to have it turn tall portrait. And on the back, we're gonna write our name, our teacher, and our seat color and number. It may already be written on there for you. If not, pause the video. Your sub will help you out getting your name, your teacher's name, and your seat color and number ready to go. Once you have all of that written with pencil on the back, flip it over to the blank white side and we will get started drawing our birds together. So the first thing we are going to draw is actually going to be the back of the bird and the wings. And we want to make sure we draw our bird large enough. I'm going to take my hand. I'm going to place it in the center of the paper. I'm going to angle it to the side just a little bit. Not all the way, just a little bit. So again, straight up and down, turn it just a little to the side. I'm going to put a dot at the top of my finger and at the bottom of my hand. So I know those are gonna be the spots that I connect together to create my oval. So a dot right at the top and a dot right underneath. All right, so there we go. We have one dot, two dots, and these are gonna help guide us to create our oval. I'm gonna make a big curve that comes out and around from my first dot and it touches to my second dot. And then we're gonna follow all the way through back up to the top. So now we have this oval for the wing of our bird. It's like a big egg shape turned a little on its side. So go ahead, if you have not already, make sure you've drawn that oval all the way up and around, large enough to make sure we have room to do all of our details for our wings. Next up on top of our oval, we're going to draw a slightly large circle, and this is gonna be the eye of our bird. Since it is an eye, we're gonna to need to put some more circles on the inside. We're gonna do another circle and one more. So you should have three circles, big, medium, and small. Next up, we're gonna create the large beak of our tropical bird. I'm gonna go from the top of the eye right about in the middle, and I'm gonna bring it as a curving line that comes down, and I will stop, because then we're going to connect with a straight line back over to the bird. So we have now started the beak of the bird. And a bird does have an opening so it can eat and chew and talk with its pretty little bird songs. So we need to make a line that goes in the middle to divide the top beak from the bottom beak. And I like to add in a couple of lines just at the top, kind of like a toucan has on their beak. So I've added in four lines, one, two, three, four. All right, next we're gonna connect a line that's gonna go from the eye and curve down to the side of the bird's body. This is the neck of the bird. So it curves down and touches to the body. So it looks like our bird is turned looking over its shoulder. Our fun tropical bird is gonna have some little curving lines on the top of the head for head feathers. So I did three curving lines, one, two, three. Let's add some wings onto our bird. I'm gonna do a curving line on this side to start one wing and a curving line on this side to start my next wing. And on our wings are feathers, so we're gonna be creating this U-shaped line. It's got a U that connects to another U that connects over to the edge of the wing. I'm gonna put a couple of these lines on my wings. One, two, three. So three lines on the wing, and I will do the same over here. My connecting U's, one, two, and three. Now our tropical bird does have a tail that's going to come out down from the bottom. So I'm gonna start about where this wing ended right here. I'm going to bring a curve that comes down and back up and around. And let's add in some lines for feathers, for our tail feathers. I've added four lines, one, two, three, four. Our bird is gonna be sitting on a stick and we wanna make it look like the stick is actually in front of the bird. Here's how we do it, you ready? I start a line for the stick but a stick is more than just one little line. It's a little thicker than that. So let's add in another one on top. 
And then to make my stick look like it's being blocked by the bird here, I'm not gonna draw my line all the way through. I'm gonna bump and jump. So I've drawn my line, I've hit the bird, so I must bump, jump around to the other side, and now finish my stick line. Same thing up here, drawn my line, bump, jump around, finish my stick. And our tropical bird lives in the jungle. So we're gonna draw some leaves around our bird. Some of our leaves can even be coming off the side of the paper. One curve and a curve down. Don't forget a line in the center to make your leaf. We could have some leaves even coming off of our stick. One curve and another curve back with our line in the center. I'm gonna add a couple more. You could even have some that run off the page as just one curve. You can't even see the rest of it. I can add some leaves coming up here off the top of the stick and maybe even some off the bottom. Got a pretty big gap right here. Let's add in part of a leaf here as well and some at the top. You can fill in your leaves wherever you think looks best for your picture. But remember not to block your bird. We wanna be able to see our bird in the middle of all of our leaves. So go ahead, let's make sure we're finishing up all of these lines with our pencil, because the next step, we are going to outline over all of our pencil lines with paint. We're going to use some blue paint to paint over our lines. So make sure you have all of your pencil lines ready to go. All right, so now that I have all of my pencil lines finished up, I'm ready to start painting in with blue. Now I wanna make sure I have a messy mat underneath my paper. My messy mat is a pink messy mat. You know where our messy mats are at. So we are going to use for this project, let's use a mini messy mat. One that is not so large, just comes off to the edges. We wanna make sure our, we are keeping our um, tables as clean as possible. So we're gonna be getting some blue paint. So you can see I have the blue paint in the hairs of my paintbrush, and we're gonna paint on top of all of our lines. Here's how I like to do it to make sure I'm not dragging my hand through my picture. I start at the top. I'm gonna to do as many lines at the top I can, and then I'll start making my way down. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you outlining all of this with blue. A helpful tip that you can see I'm doing while I'm painting is I am moving my picture as I paint to make sure that it is in a better position for my hand. So I'm not having to accidentally rest my hand on top of wet paint. So if you need to move your picture while you paint, make sure you're also moving your messy mat at the same time. Now I have a very large messy mat, but yours is gonna be smaller. So move both your picture and your messy mat at the same time if you need to move to make it easier to paint. And there we go, I've outlined over all of my lines with my blue paint. It needs to go safely to the drying rack to dry for next time. So go ahead, make sure you carry this to the drying rack. You will turn in your messy mat and we will get our tables cleaned up. Awesome job today, we will pick these up next art class. Welcome back, I hope you guys are ready to do some watercolor today on our birds because we are jumping right on in. So our birds have had enough time to dry, so our paint is no longer wet and we are gonna be adding in some watercolor paints. You're gonna receive one of my large watercolor palettes you will be sharing with your shoulder partner. Remember that is the person who sits beside you. You will also be sharing your towel and your water cup, but you will each get your own paintbrush. So to use watercolor, your palette will start like this. It is dry, these colors are not wet, they have dried. They need water in order to activate, to wake them up. And we wanna think about it just like with our paint. 
If we were using paint and scooping lots of paint out, there'd be no paint left to use. So we don't want to take our brush and scoop super hard because you're gonna take away all the paint from the tray. You also don't wanna scoop super hard because what would happen to your hairs? Oh no, they would start to have a bad hair day. So we wanna make sure we're treating both our brush and our paints with kindness and respect. So when we wanna activate a color, like I wanna paint this leaf green. I have two greens in my palette right here. I'm gonna to choose to do this green first. I take my brush in the water. I slowly stir on top, pressing lightly, and I can start to see that color is activated. I can then take the green that is on my paintbrush's hairs and I can paint in my leaf green. If I want more watercolor, I just come back, tap, 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 lightly grabbing some more color, and now I can paint some more parts of my picture. If you are pressing down super hard on these, you're going to take away all the paint, you're gonna make it where it starts to fall out, and you're also going to potentially even ruin other colors beside it because you're sloshing it all around. So make sure you're just going slightly on top. I do not need to reactivate it anymore because it is already wet. So I can use this same green to start going in and painting in some more of my leaves. But what about that other green in my palette? What about this green? I'd like to check out what that one looks like. I need to make sure my brush is clean. Just like we've talked about before, it needs to go in the water, swirl around, Check to make sure that your brush is actually clean. If you still see color on it, swirl again, and don't leave him cold when he gets out of the bath. Make sure you dry him off. Now, let's activate our next green over here. A couple light swirls around. I can see it is ready to go. It's juiced up. Ooh, this one's like a little bit of a lighter green. How pretty. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish painting in all of my leaves green. I think that's a fun place to start. So let's add some more green to our leaves. If you're swirling on top of your color and you're noticing that it's not blending and painting as well as you would like on your paper, maybe get just a little more water on your brush, tap a few more times, and then you will be good to go. Remember, we want to go always lightly in our palettes, never pushing down super hard. So here we go. I've got all my green leaves painted in. Now let's paint in the toucan or the bird and its stick. I'm gonna leave all this space around our bird, our tropical bird, it is kinda of like a toucan. I'm gonna to leave it all white for right now. I'm only worried about painting in the bird. And for this, you can of course choose any colors. Our bird is gonna be very colorful. So I'm gonna make sure my brush is cleaned out as I start to pick colors to put on my bird. Any color that has not been activated, I will activate it by lightly swirling on top, going back and starting to paint. And you can paint right on top of your blue lines. It won't smudge and smear around. Something fun you can also do with your watercolors is you can start to blend colors. So I have my orange that I started painting in here first. While it is still wet, I'm gonna take my paintbrush, add in my second color, and I'm gonna mix the two together so you can see what they start to look like when they blend together. So I have my orange at the top, my purple at the bottom, and then this fun little blend in the middle. You can also take your paintbrush, dry it off on the towel so it's a dry brush, and just come back and add a few little strokes between the two to help really blend them. So you can have fun blending your colors as well on your bird. Look how beautiful our bird is looking with our watercolor on it now. We've got our green for our leaves. I did brown for my stick. And then I have all this empty white space in the background. We're not gonna finish filling it all in. We're gonna add in some colorful dots. So you can take any of your colors and start adding in some little colorful dots into your background. I'm gonna start with this really pretty purple pink. Rinse my brush out. I'm gonna add in some oranges. And then my final color I'm going to do is I'm going to use yellow. Can you use as many colors as you want? Yes, but you should still have some white space left in your background around your birds. Almost like little confetti pieces falling all around. I like to do these three colors together. I think they look really nice, 
But again, it is up to you how you may want to choose your background colors. And I'm just using my paintbrush to just pat in little spots. Again, I still have some white space. Once you have finished this step, we are going to take it now to the drying rack to dry. Make sure you turn in your messy mat after you put your artwork on the drying rack, and we will make sure that these items get off of your table, cleaned up. If you would like to be a cleanup helper, you know how helpful that is for Miss S and to help make sure our class stays clean. So of course you can help wipe down tables and be a cleanup helper today too. Awesome job, guys. All right, everybody, our final step with our birds. Now that everything is dried, we have these beautiful colored birds with our bright backgrounds as well, is we can go back in with some markers on top to start making some fun patterns and spaces. So what you'll wanna do is you'll want to take your marker that matches the color where you're going to draw to do your patterns. We don't want them to stand out too bright, we almost want them to blend in. So I have a brown stick, so I'm gonna be using my brown marker and I could put some brown stripes on my stick all the way across so it matches to the color. On my green leaves, I can use my green marker to put some spiral curly lines. And I don't have to do it on every part of the picture. Maybe I, I only wanna do it on a couple of spots in the picture. I wanna put some spirals down here too. But on my other leaves, I wanna use a darker green to put some polka dots. Using my colors to match in the body, I'm also going to do some wiggly designs. So you can think about different types of lines or even shapes that you may want to add onto your picture. Remember to match your colors. So on my beak, since it's red down at the bottom, I might wanna do some red circles. Notice how they don't stand out too bright. We want them to almost blend in. And look how cool that looks. Again, you don't have to do it on every part of your picture. You can leave some spaces just the way they are, but let's add in a couple fun little pops of surprising lines and shapes to our picture. And then my final thing that I like to add, and of course, if you like to add this too, you can. We have so many different green options with our markers and you can choose any of your greens. I like to think about in the jungle, there are not only lots of leaves, but lots of vines. And I am gonna add some twisting, curving vines in my background. And what's fun is I'm almost playing like dodge the paint spot. So if I have one vine that goes through here, it's going to jump around those paint spots, bump and jump around anywhere where it may hit your bird and run off the side of the page. So I'm gonna add in some squiggling vines, bumping and jumping, dodging those paint spots as best as it can, woo, to create some of these fun, wiggly, squiggly vines all the way around in different spots. And don't forget, they also have little leaves on the vines. You can add in some leaves, some green leaves to your vine. You can do this with the same green or you can even trade out and use different greens. I really like this one green, so I'm, I'm only gonna use this one green to create some vines. Now, if you have a vine or a leaf that accidentally goes a little bit on top of a paint spot, is that okay? Yes, try your best to dodge them, which means go around them. But if you accidentally go on top, no big deal, just keep on working. So let's add in our final squiggling vines, our last touches to our patterns and designs, and we will have a finished beautiful tropical bird. I hope you guys had fun creating and I will see you for the next project.